Welcome Academians! Today we will make this awesome calculator with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. As always, you can find the source code below in the description. Without further ado, let's get started. This is the starting state of the project. You can find the link in the description below. Start our project with Live Server. If you don't have Live Server installed, go to Extensions tab and install this extension. Now let's start adding our HTML markup. Let's add the section in which we will work. Now let's add the container div to wrap all our markup in it. We should add the display to the container and we will display results and all the expressions and numbers here. And below the display we will have the buttons grid where we will add all our buttons. Let's create a few of them. Let's add some symbols, numbers and everything that you can find in a calculator. Every four button will be on the same row, so I try to add them accordingly. But feel free to use your own layout here. You probably noticed that the fourth button looks actually a little weird. It's an HTML entity, which is a special text that will, in this case, render a left arrow for us. The equal sign will be really special, as we will use this button to execute all our commands in our calculator. So we will give it an ID of equal. We will be able to select this from JavaScript much easier. Now we have all markup that we need for this project. If you open up Chrome and see our server, you can see that all our buttons are rendered, but it looks really weird. So let's add some CSS to make it beautiful. I've already linked an empty CSS file in our starter project. So let's add some styles. First, we will start with our container. We will add the max width to it and position it 10% of the top and horizontally make it in the center, applying auto margins. I'll also apply block shadow to make it look a little bit more beautiful. You can copy it from the source code that I provided in the description below. Next we will start by applying styles to the display. We will align the text to the right, that's how calculators works anyways, and then we will apply a fixed height and a fixed line height. Making these two both equal, we'll center our text vertically. I'll also make our text a little bit bigger. Now let's style our buttons. We will display our buttons using CSS grid. We will apply border bottom and border left because we want to avoid double borders. We will fix this later. Regarding the columns, we will have four equal columns. That's why we use four times one FR, which means fraction. As I mentioned before, we want to avoid double borders. So we will apply border top and border right to every div in our buttons class. So this way we have all the four borders without them having a collision. Now we will make our buttons look much more nice. Set the height and center the text vertically and horizontally. We will also apply cursor pointer so the cursor of the user will turn into a pointer when hovers over the button suggesting him that this is a clickable element on the page. As you can see, our calculator is getting into shape. So now let's add some styles to our equal button. I want it to be different from the other buttons as it has a special functionality. So I will make a blue background for it and a white text color. It actually looks really nice and different. I want to make one small change in the styling, then we can move on. I want to inverse the colors on the button when the user hovers over it. So the background color will be black and the text color will be white. 
we will add a little transition to it so it will animate in and animate out smoothly. You can see that it adds to the user experience quite a lot. Now we will add all the calculator functionalities with JavaScript. Let's create our index.js file first. Then we should include it in a script tag in our HTML file, so our page will know where to look for our JavaScript. We can verify that our JavaScript works properly with our good old console.log function. If we open our page, we can see hello world on the console. Now it's time to make our calculator work. First, we will get our display div by its ID and save it to a variable called display. We will use this variable to update the contents of the display. Now we will get all of our buttons. We will do that by going through the HTML and searching for every element that has the class button. We will get all of our buttons this way into our single variable. As you can see, we got plenty of them. If we look at the console, we can see it looks like an array, but it's actually an HTML collection. So we have to convert it to an array using the array.from function, which will take our HTML collection and make an array from it. If we print it to the console, we can see it's now an array, so we can use our beloved array functions on it. We will map through our buttons array and apply a click event listener to every button in our array. We will provide a callback function to our event listener, which will get a parameter event, which we call E, that has all the information about our event. For example, we can get the target of the event, so which element was clicked, and we will use this event object to identify which button was clicked and we will take different actions based on it, but now let's just write it down to the console. Let's open our browser and test it. If we click a button, then we can see the event, the element that triggered the event and the inner text of the element. We will decide on, the, on our actions based on the value of the inner text. So let's write up our switched statement that we'll check for our inner text. By default, we would want to add the inner text of the button to the inner text of the display. So it will get displayed in our calculator. Let's open up our browser and test our changes. As you can see, clicking any button will add the content of that button to the display. We don't want this in every case, so let's set up several cases where we want to do something else. For example, when the user clicks the C button, we want to clear the display. We will do that by setting the inner text of the display to an empty string. If we test this with our browser, we can see that it clears the display, but leaves a character C on the display. This is the basic behavior of a switch statement. It finds the first case which switches, then it executes everything below that. So we have to add the break statement to end the execution here and don't execute the default step every time. If we test it now, we can see that it works as intended. Let's continue our implementation with the back arrow. For this, I will copy the back arrow character from the calculator. It will clear the lastly entered character by the user. For this functionality, we will use the string splice method to remove the last character from our display string. Don't forget to add the break statement as we don't want to add the back arrow to our display. If we test this in our browser, we can see that it clears the last character flawlessly. One improvement that we can do here is to only remove the last character if we have something in our display. It wouldn't cause any errors, but we want to avoid unnecessary function calls. 
Now it's time to implement the most interesting functionality in our calculator, the equal button. We will use a built-in JavaScript function called evolve to achieve this functionality. It takes a string as a parameter, in this case it will be the display text, and executes it like it would be a JavaScript code. If we type in a valid mathematical expression, then it gets evaluated correctly. We have to add the break statement because we don't want the equal sign to show on the display. Now if we test it in our browser, we can see that the equal sign is no more present on the display. We can try more complex expressions and our calculator will solve these problems easily. One thing that we have to handle now are invalid expressions. Because now if we type in invalid mathematical expressions like this, then we will get a console error. It won't break our calculator, but it is not a good user experience. So we want to inform the user that he typed in something wrong. We can do that by using a try-catch block. In this case, in JavaScript, we are try to execute the statements in our try block. And if something goes wrong, then the statements in the catch block are executed. So we can handle our error here. For now, we will set our display to show error. Now, if we type in an invalid expression, then we won't see an error showing on the console because we handled it in our code and the user sees the error text on our display. This is a way better user experience. I want to make an important security notice regarding Evolve. If somebody with malicious intentions comes to our app and opens up the HTML for the display, and writes in any kind of malicious JavaScript code, then when we hit the equal button, then the code will be executed as evolve will treat it as valid JavaScript. I will show you two examples here. In the first one, we will call an alert function just to demonstrate you that it really executes the JavaScript inside. As you can see, the alert gets popped, which means that our JavaScript that we just hacked into the calculator got executed. This is just the tip of the iceberg. As I said earlier, Evolve really executes any kind of valid JavaScript. In our next example, we will redirect the user to Google. Now if we hit the equal button, the browser redirects us to Google. Google is a safe website, so we are safe now, but imagine that it could be any website. For example, fake phishing websites, which are seeking your precious data, like login informations, or credit card informations. So use Evolve really cautiously and for applications with real users you should avoid it. That's all for this tutorial. Congratulations for creating a calculator with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Thank you for watching till the end of this video. If you found it useful or learned anything new, please consider subscribing to this channel. You can also drop a like if you wish and leave feedback in the comment section below. I see you folks in the next video.